Long line of cars stretch for miles on I-90 near Snoqualmie Pass. The pass was closed earlier today, but it is currently back open. Around 22 inches of snow has impacted travelers, and the snowfall is not done yet. And I-90 is not the only roadway that is a mess. Crashes are happening all over. This was the scene on I-5 near Lake Samish earlier today. Cranes were brought in to lift up a rolled over semi. And in Mason County, down trees closed US-101 from from Hoodsport down to Minerva Terrace. It took utility crews eight hours to clear and reopen that stretch. Meanwhile, State Route 106 and route to Kitsap is also back open. And those down trees aren't just closing roads. They're also taking out power for tens of thousands of people. Crews have been working all day long to get electricity restored before another storm rolls through. And earlier today, over 100,000 homes and businesses were in the dark across the Sound, causing four school districts to cancel classes and even more to push back the start times. Right now, 20,000 homes and businesses are without power, the majority of those coming in Snohomish County. Thanks for joining us for the News at 4. I'm Brian Jackson. And I'm Hannah Kim. More snow is on the way, and all the standing water is expected to freeze overnight, causing dangerous conditions. We've got team coverage for you tonight. Our weather team has the very latest model showing where and when this next normal hit. Jennifer Dowling is in Linwood covering the cleanup. But first, we had to Steve Kiggins in Edmonds, one of the places the power outage hit the hardest. So what are things looking like over there now, Steve? Well, you know, crews have been working since really early this morning, scrambling all over this community. We're in Edmonds on 224th. I mean, it'll look very big deal, but that's a new poll. Uh, that's progress in, in this neighborhood, but it's not quite as fast as everyone wants. We've got folks just a couple blocks away that got power. Folks here, where the new poll is, no power. There are still thousands of folks waiting. They're on it like, you know, white on rice. Snohomish PUD crews started early Wednesday in this Edmonds neighborhood, clearing debris and moving quickly to run new wire and poles to bring power back as fast as possible. The, the sound of it all last night, I don't, I don't remember hearing that um, in previous storms like this. Um, just the sound of things breaking all over the place. The mailboxes at Patrick Sweeney's house crushed after falling limbs were tossed to the ground. It's a similar scene from street to street. 88th Avenue West, yellow caution tape drapes across the street, warning drivers about a line fallen from a utility pole. Neighbor Ralph Clemens says yesterday's storm sounded like a war zone. This is probably the first time that we've really lost power like this. We've had it go out before just short, you know, short periods, but obviously this is was catastrophic enough where they're going to uh, uh, be a couple days to get it back on. Power remained out at the Safeway Shopping Center on 236th Street. Mary Jennings came by for bacon and eggs. Really, I was worried about the freezer downstairs with all of our food. Yeah. Our house is really purple. Connie Cunningham and her grandson also going without power, but they got a fireplace keeping them warm for a moment. They considered renting a room just for the power. I told my mother-in-law, let's go rent a motel. <laughs> let's go somewhere else where they... Maybe they'll serve us bed and bre breakfast in bed. I don't know. You know, that doesn't sound like too bad of an idea, especially if you, if you live in a place like this. You're in Edmonds again on 224th. All of this slush, all of this snow, all of this moisture stuck. Mo most of the roads, including a lot of the back roads, they're plowed. But here on 224th, this thing is going to turn into a sheet of ice overnight. Maybe you do want to go to a hotel. For now, we'll have in Edmonds. Steve Kiggins, Fox 13 News. Thank you, Steve. Now let's move just a couple of miles east to Linwood. Yeah, they're also dealing with some major power outages there. And Jennifer, last night we saw the snow pummeling that area. So what are things like there now? Well, it's pretty quiet as far as snowfall, but it is very slushy and residents are concerned about that uh, slush refreezing. You can see there's a lot of branches down behind me. We're in Gold Park in Linwood and uh, those branches were coming down overnight. Uh, a lot of that heavy uh, snow brought those branches down. It made for a busy morning for both residents cleaning up and those tree companies that do clearing as well. Jeff Harris spent the morning cleaning up after large branches came down in his driveway and into the street overnight. 
some of the branch so big it's boom, and it shakes the house and you're like, oh, please don't hit my car, you know. He says the limbs fell in stages starting at around 1 a.m. It just gave way and absolutely made a mess all in the street and and in the front yard and stuff. It's going to be a big cleanup job for sure. Fortunately, the branches missed the family vehicles, but they made for a very busy morning. How is cleanup going? It's slow and uh, I am uh, out of shape, so <laughs> so uh, we'll get there though, you know what I mean. Slowly I just get it in the yard and then uh, start chopping it up from there. Curtis Katit, the GM of Eastside Tree Works, says his crews were also extremely busy this afternoon on calls to clear fallen trees and limbs. He says the weight of the heavy snow was the biggest factor in causing those branches to break overnight. It was really the snowfall and, and the heaviness. I think everything froze and then, you know, got brittle and just fell. Katit says deciduous trees with remaining leaves were especially hard hit due to the extra weight collecting on the branches. He says the ground has also been saturated by rain and that's causing trees to uproot and tip over as well. Several trees had fallen over around Maple School, where a truck had been damaged as well. Heavy wet snow also made for a challenging cleanup at the school grounds. Makes me feel like I'm the age that I am. I just got to clear the sidewalks and stuff like that, so, you know, it's... Thankfully, the kids are at home safe. Rick says he's making good progress, but had to make a quick stop before getting to work. I forgot my gloves, but thankfully they had this nice pair of ladies driving gloves there at the grocery store. The only pair left, but at least it's keeping my hands warm. Businesses were also busy clearing snow, and those who were able to stick closer to home said they would do some cleanup later on. Yeah, it snowed a lot, so just walking my dog in the snow. Canel was taking his dog Spike out when we caught up with him. I'll do some shoveling yeah, for my driveway. Maybe use some of Spike's help. <laughs> Yeah, I bet those uh, husky type dogs love the snow, but Jeff Harris tells us that residents are a little nervous that there is more snow potentially in the forecast because that could mean another round of cleanup. Reporting live in Linwood, Jennifer Dowling, Fox 13 News. Thank you, Jennifer. We now head to our Fox 13 weather team with Lisa Villegas and Aaron Mayofsky. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. I know kids didn't go to school today, a lot of them, and people wondering what the commute is going to be like going home. So let's start with Chief Meteorologist Lisa Villegas. What do we need to know, Lisa? Well, right now we're still seeing another batch of precipitation, if you will. A little mix of rain. We're also seeing some more of that snow. We have this upper level low pressure system. So with that, we're going to see some of these rain bands and snow bands continuing across portions of our area. So we're talking about western Washington, especially for those in the central south sound like Olympia over through Seattle and stretching east of that. So we're talking about the foothills now in King County and across areas like Snoqualmie Pass and White Pass. That's where we're seeing more of that snow at this this hour. So zooming in, Gig Harbor, Lake Bay, Tacoma, you're just seeing a little bit of that wintry mix. Wouldn't be surprised if you see those big fat flakes and over into Federal Way, seeing a little bit of that mixture too. Better shot of that snow, Enumclaw, and then stretching over in Snoqualmie Pass. And that's where those road conditions are getting very dicey because temperatures are freezing. In fact, as we take a look at the temperatures all across the board, we're sitting in the 30s and the 20s for the passes. Just giving you a quick little view here, Aaron. These roadways, well, we're seeing that compact ice and some of us in the lowlands are a little concerned that this might even continue for some of us, especially across the South Sound. Yeah, it's kind of like you go to sleep and you're not sure what you're going to wake up with. Let's get the future cast. This is a look as we roll into tonight, Wednesday night, 10 p.m. You can see we're still getting those showers. Lisa was talking about riding up from the south, and we'll see those push into Puget Sound, the heart of it, into downtown. So, yes, we could see some flurries continue in the lowlands and get a little bit of accumulation, anywhere from trace to maybe two, three inches, and then it starts to really push on as we uh, move into this forecast. So 4 a.m. Thursday, waking up again. A lot of us getting a dose from Seattle, Tacoma to Olympia, that zone and further east. That's potential for a little bit of snow to pile up in the morning hours. 8 a.m., we get another little round. We're going to get these batches of snow that move through, but by the time we get to 3 p.m., most of it settles in and pushes off to the east into the foothills of the Cascades. So overnight tonight, those temperatures are going to dip down pretty cool and cold into the 20s for most of us in the south sound up towards Shelton at 28. 31 for Seattle. Average is now 38 degrees for our overnight seasonal highs. So you can see where we're going with this. Our seasonal highs should be just in the upper 40s, but we're going to hang in the mid to upper 30s to near 40. We're going to keep our weather alert into the morning hours because of that commute. It will be chilly and cold. Friday and Saturday, we'll detail it a little more, but pockets of showers and some sunshine.